Today I want to present another top 10 book list on my channel. Books are banned in at least 30 of the 50 states of the United States, with Texas and Florida banning more books than any other states. So today, 10 books that are banned in some states or counties because parents or parent organizations do not want their little kids to be confronted with the content or the language of these books. Let's start with Toni Morrison's famous novel, Beloved, that is banned from some school libraries in the great state of Colorado. Morrison won the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1993. However, no kids in the Adams 12 five-star schools in Adams County outside Denver have to read one of the greatest American authors. In her novel, Morrison describes the trauma and despair of a formerly enslaved woman who cannot forget the experiences she has left behind and the grave of her child that had no name but only the inscription Beloved. A group that called itself Concerned Citizens of the Adams 12 Five Star School District with people like Erin Gee, Katie Scher and Ben Helgeson were behind the ban of Toni Morrison's novel. Helgeson had complained dozens of times in emails about a teacher he called a priestess of critical race theory. Mr. Helgeson lost an election in 2023 to become a member of the school board, although he was endorsed by the Colorado Conservative Patriot Alliance for this. Pretty famous in America is also the Clay County District in the great state of Florida. There we find pick number two on my list of banned books, and this is Americana, or Americana by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie from Nigeria. The book is a portrayal of the African diaspora immigration experience, and Adichie critically observes race in America. Its discussions of race, identity, and sexuality are seen as objectionable by some parents in the Clay County District in Florida. Donald J. Trump received Donald J. Trump received 68% of the votes in the presidential elections in 2020 in Clay County that lies south of Jacksonville in northern Florida. And here we have Bruce Friedman. He has been a prominent advocate for book bans in Clay County. The man is the president of the Florida chapter of No Left Turn in Education, a group focused on challenging what they view as an appropriate or indoctrinating content in public school curricula. Friedman has worked hard to ban hundreds of books from school education. The Kite Runner by Khaled Hosseini is an international bestseller, highly acclaimed by critics. Where the New York Times saw the book as a powerful story of friendship and betrayal, concerned mothers in Fort Lauderdale, where Broward County Council is situated, believe that the Kite Runner promotes Islam and terrorism. The organization that advocated the ban is Moms for Liberty, a conservative group has been, that has been active in challenging various books across the state, across the whole United States, citing reasons such as sexual content, explicit language, and themes they consider inappropriate for children. Moms for Liberty is today a nationwide organization with 120,000 active members in 285 chapters across 44 states and is run by three women, by Tina Deskovich, who founded Moms for Liberty together with Tiffany Justice and Marie Rogerson. They initially opposed COVID-19 mask mandates, but have widened their engagement and are currently behind challenging hundreds of books in many different states, especially, of course, books about race, sexuality, and LGBTQ plus issues. Back to our good friend Bruce Friedman and Clay Catney. They, in Clay County, have successfully banned Yag Yassi's novel Homecoming from being in school libraries. Yag Yassi made the mistake of writing a novel about two half-sisters from 18th century Ghana, and that she explores themes of racism, slavery, colonialism, and their long-lasting impact over the centuries on the life of people. Florida is currently the state where book bans escalate enormously. It is important to note here that a vast majority of parents in the United States is against book bans and believe in the importance of openly discuss issues in school guided by responsible and good teachers. Bans are almost always supported by small right extremist groups and institutions that call themselves things like Moms for Liberty, but actually do want the exact opposite of liberty in their living environment.
Governor Ron DeSantis of Florida has signed the so-called Stop Woke Act in Florida in 2022. He, is, he was and he is a strong advocate for this legislation and wanted to combat woke ideology and to promote what he understood as individual freedom and parental rights in education. With state politicians backing up radical parents, the demands for banning this and that and also this have risen, and Florida seems to want to challenge the great state of Texas as the book-banning champions of the United States, and maybe they will beat Texas. Escandia County in Florida has banned Arundhati Roy's The God of Small Things. This book is a story about the childhood experiences of fraternal twins whose lives are destroyed by the so-called love laws in India in the 1960s. It also explores the caste system and criticizes the British colonial rule in India. In 1997, Arundhati Roy won for this book, the Booker Prize in the United Kingdom, the greatest prize you can win for a book in English. However, Escambia County parents in Florida did what they could to ban this book from reaching their children in 2022. In comes an English teacher named Vicky Baggett, who works at Northview High School. Baggett has challenged hundreds of books and still counting in Escambia County in Florida. Former students of Miss Baggett allege that she openly promoted racist and homophobic beliefs in class. Three students who spoke to the website Popular Info reported that Baggett said that, quote, it is a sin for racists to mix together and that whites are meant to be with whites and blacks are meant to be with blacks. Who does not want their children to have a teacher like the great Vicky Baggett? That's my question to you. But the Baggetts and the Friedmans and the Deskovich are very successful in censorship and book banning and contribute to fear and hate by excluding even internationally acclaimed books from the education system in today's America. Two years ago, I read and deeply enjoyed Kristen Rodkus' amazing graphic nonfiction book, CQ, A Journey Through American Loneliness. It's a great book that I highly recommend for each and every one of you. Through the lenses of gender and violence, technology and art, Kristen Rodke ushers us through a history of loneliness and longing and shares what feels impossible to share. The Rockwood School District in the Show Me State of Missouri has banned this book in the fall of 2022. And the reason why they did it, the school district refers to Missouri Senate Bill 775 that was signed into law by the vote of a Republican majority on June 30, 2022. The goal behind the bill, the bill was to protect children from content deemed inappropriate. The bill says that providing, quote, unquote, explicit sexual material to a student is a A-class misdemeanor, which in Missouri can give you up to one year in jail. Already before the law was passed, parents called libraries, then even the police, and asked how could it be that schools and libraries lend out pornography to children. St. Louis Public Radio reported that only in the Ventsville district, 200 books were being pulled from the shelves for review. Ventsville has a significantly higher average income than the median household income in Missouri. While Ventsvillers make $116,800 on average, the state has 64811 as its average. The book banners are affluent people, at least here, and also they are predominantly white. 83.3% of the student population of Ventsville is white, according to Census Reporter. In the whole city of St. Louis, whites are 46.27% of the population, a lot less than in Ventsville, which is situated on the western part outside St. Louis. It is a part of St. Charles County that voted 61.6% Trump in the last presidential election in 2020. So is there a connection between that? We have three features in the book banning Mecca. High income, huge white majority, and strong support for Donald Trump. You can think about that question if there really is a some kind of connection between all this. But let's go to North Dakota for book number seven. I cried when I read Rainbow Roll's wonderful novel, YA novel, Eleanor and Park. Is that the reason why parents in the Williston Basin School District in North Dakota reported it so that it was banned from school libraries? Maybe it was. 
Two misfit teenagers who grow up in difficult families fall in love with each other and they have a great romance. In North Dakota, the book was criticized for its vile profanity and it was deemed as too mature and angry parents counted 227 cases of inappropriate language, among them several usages of the F word. Margaret Edwards, The Handmaid's Tale, is of course abandoned in a lot of school districts in America, primarily in Florida, Missouri, and Texas. The novel's exploration of controversial issues such as gender, power, and religious extremism can be seen as challenging to prevailing social and political norms and make it dangerous in the eyes of many conservative parents who are eager to not confront their children with the fact that there are different views of life and different views of the world surrounding us. The Frisco, we have to go to Texas, the Frisco Independent School District ranks number seven among the 1,018 public school districts in Texas. It is situated in the north of Dallas. It also ranks high among all the Texan book banning districts with having 368 books forbidden in its schools in school year 22-23. With an average income of more than $144,000 annually, we see a similar situation like in the banning capital of Missouri, Vanceville. Frisco is high above the state and the national average income. Other than in Missouri, the ethnic diversity is mixed with a high percentage of Asian and white people, but a lot less Latinos than in other parts of Texas. Ray Bradbury's SF classic Fahrenheit 451, which plays in a society where it is forbidden to own books, is banned in the Frisco Independent School District in Texas. That is one of the most stunning things I've found and I encountered here in my little research. A book about banning books is banned in Texas. Oh my God. Finally, there have been attempts to ban Isabel Wilkerson's brilliant exploration cast, the origins of our discontent, where she compares the social stratification in the United States to the caste systems in India and Nazi Germany, drawing controversial parallels that a lot of conservatives find deeply unsettling and try to delete from the public discourse. Delete this from the public discourse. Out! Of course, Wilkerson presents uncomfortable truths about the systemic nature of racism and caste-like hierarchies in America. However, her viewpoints are legit and founded in many examples from personal experiences, but mostly founded in research in that book by Wilkerson. So let me make it perfectly clear. I strongly, strongly oppose book bans and parents who in the name of liberty want to decide about the education of not only their children, but all other kids in a district, a county, a state, or the whole nation, maybe the whole world. I strongly believe that access to a diverse range of ideas and perspectives is crucial for a healthy democracy and that attempts to achieve the opposite are leading to limited thinking and a lot closer to authoritarianism. Banning books stifles intellectual freedom and open discourse that is essential in a livable democracy. I strongly believe that students should have the opportunity to engage with challenging and complex material which can foster empathy, understanding, and a well-rounded education to make them better people. Banning books is a very serious beginning of banning ideas, banning perspectives, and banning opinions that are different. Ultimately, this is leading to less tolerance, less understanding the other, which leads to believing that the own norm is the only acceptable, which leads to prejudice, suppression, bullying, and violence. Well, ladies and gentlemen, my dear friends on this channel, you see that I am pretty much engaged in this, and I absolutely hate banning books. It is like sort of the start of a dictatorship. Thank you very much for watching this video, and I see you soon in another one. Bye.